This instructional companion on impending motion falls under the major topic Dynamics and Vibrations, which contains the following five chapters Properties of Solid Bodies, Kinematics, Kinetics, which is where this will come from, Mechanisms and Power Transmission Systems, and Vibrating Systems. The chapter on kinetics covers a great many topics, uh, one of which is flat and belt friction, from which this impending motion will come from. I would have sort of thought that would be back over in the, the topic section, uh, statics, and in the chapter determinant statics, uh, but um, Mr. Lindeberg has decided to put it here. This instructional companion on impending motion involves the following problem. Uh, we have a block that's sitting on a rough surface. Uh, we're going to push on it. Uh, we're sort of the force P. And the question is, what value of the applied force P will cause motion? Well, as uh, always, uh, we need to start with a free body diagram. Well, to save YouTube time, I've uh, gone and drawn that. Well, we have four forces acting on the body. Uh, clearly, our force P, uh, our weight, which goes down through the center of, uh, of mass of this uh, crater box. Uh, there's two forces underneath. One is the friction force and one is a normal force. I've drawn these uh, straight and I put the normal force in the middle, uh, but realize that that represents a uh, s resultant of a distributed load because the, uh, the block sits uh, uh, across some area. So both the friction force and the normal force are really the resultants of a distributed load and we, and we typically just show the, uh, the normal force uh, in the middle. We don't really know where it is, but that's where we show it. Well, since we're looking at uh, the block just about to, um, to move or have motion, let's look at the equations of equilibrium. Okay, first we can apply some of the forces in the two directions, some of the forces in x equals zero, and what we would use is our standard x, uh, y, and I'll make a uh, moment counterclockwise here. And so if we look at that, we've got uh, P minus uh, F of F equals zero. Okay, and we'll just call that, be able to refer to it later, equation number one. And some of the forces in Y equals zero, well, we've got just N minus W equals zero, which of course gives us that N is equal to W in this problem, but okay. And then um, what about moments? Well, again, to save YouTube time, I, I just write out the statement, and when I'm working this problem, maybe not in, the, in an exam format, I write out the following sentence. I can't take moments because the normal force N is not located. We kind of know where W is, and we know where P is if we were given some dimensions, but uh, and we kind of know what the line of action of F of F is, but we do not know where N is. Okay? So what have we got here? Well, let me move this up. Uh, from 1, we get uh, that the friction force matches the force that we're applying. And we'll see that on the next page. And from 2, we find out that uh, N is equal to W. Okay, but this is the one that I want to talk about on the next page. It matches it 1 to 1. Uh, as you, whatever you push on, uh, the friction force matches that up to a point. So let's go to the next page. Well, in the MERM, uh, it does have the following plot. You plot uh, F of F to uh, the force P that you're applying. And as I mentioned, you're matching this one to one, uh, 45 degrees, as is indicated here. So you put this 45 degrees. So you apply it until finally it breaks loose and uh, I sort of like to draw it with a little dotted line because it is a discontinuity and then what happens is that uh, the force sort of stays constant. And what I tell uh, people is uh, feel this. Okay? I suggest to, to my students uh, find something heavy on the, say, a kitchen counter or a table. Uh, apply a force very carefully, noting uh, how you're putting that force on. Push just a little bit at a time, and then once it breaks loose, feel the fact that uh, the force stays, not only is it lower than the force it took to get it moving, but essentially is a constant force. But you probably may not feel that, but you certainly will feel the difference between the, the force that it took to get it moving and the force that it took to uh, 
keep it moving. And those values uh, using what is referred to as Coulomb's law of friction is that these values up here are, I call them mu s n and mu k n, but in the uh, MERM, uh, the terms uh, f s and f k are used. That's okay, it's just a matter of notation. Uh, but I think most textbooks use a mu instead. Uh, but the mu s n is the value, and it's a, a bigger number, um, is the maximum load. And so that's, that's the point at which motion would happen, is when the friction force uh, uh, reaches mu, mu s n. Okay? And Coulomb's law merely me mentions that or assumes that the friction force is proportional to the normal force and the big E is only. Okay? Real friction is proportional uh, to everything. <laughs> I mean temperature, uh, barometric pressure, the history, the history of two, two materials, you rub them together and stop is different than when we first did it. I mean just about everything you can think up. Um, real friction, but for uh, for mechanical friction uh, being proportional to N only is all that we need. And here in this particular problem, uh, N is equal to W. So what we come down to is something that says, well, our, our formula, P, uh, formula P slip is then going to be equal to the maximum friction force, and that is equal to mu s n in general, but in fact here it's mu s w. So this is in general, n may be something else in some other problems, but in general and in here in this particular problem is mu s w. So you would write down, well, motion happens when uh, force P uh, becomes uh, mu s W, okay. You could put in, but um, mu s w, okay, for this particular one, okay. Well, uh, maybe some of you ask, and probably should, what about tipping? Well, that's the source of this instructional companion. Um, it the MERM does not address tipping. Now, well, and you need to. Uh, the FE exam and surely the PE exam has had just that. That's why I wrote the equation out or the question out is cause motion. And so uh, I can remember working a problem that was in a sample exam and uh, I did the slip, looked in the back, that wasn't the answer. I went, how could that be? I teach this course. How could that be? Oh, tipping. So, oops. Okay. Let's think about this. Now, if you're not giving any dimensions, then slipping is going to be the only possibility. But if you start seeing things like the H, the height to the P, you see the width of the box A, you see the height of the box B, uh, you might want to be thinking about tipping. Okay, well, what does that free body diagram look like? Well, uh, what has happened is, is that uh, as this gets ready to tip, then as, as soon as you get one air molecule underneath the bottom of the box, as it just begins to tip, you know, the angle of tip is, you know, one millionth of a degree, uh, the box is really resting on this front edge right here, and I'll call this, since I've used the letter uh, P already, we could call this point Q. I uh, could call it zero, but I, it gets lost in the mix here. So I'll call that point Q, the front edge. It's really an edge in three dimensions here. So now N is located. So that sentence that I wrote previously uh, rings the bell and said, well, I can now, I can now take moments. Okay? The sum of the forces in the X and the Y don't change. Okay? We still have uh, X this way and Y that way. And moment is going to make this now, we're going to need that now counterclockwise. So what do those look like? Okay, again, to save some YouTube time, uh, the two equations, some of the forces in X doesn't change. You still have P minus F of F, although in this particular case, what we really need to do is I've done down in the third equation, we really need to call this P tip, but it doesn't really matter. P whatever is still minus F of F is equal to zero. What you do have to remember is this does not equal mu S N. 
Okay, you do not slam dunk mu s n everywhere you see uh, the friction force. Okay, not so. Some of the forces in y still give you n minus w equals zero, but now if you take moments at q, uh, w about q, put your finger here, it will produce a uh, counter counterclockwise, which we've made counterclockwise positive. The moment arm would be half of the a because it's typically going to be. Uh, symmetrical, so W times A over 2 minus P tip, because now um, it's low, since N is located, it's only for that value, not the slipping value, uh, times its moment arm. Again, that's going to be H uh, clockwise, which is a negative. Well, we can now solve for P tip. Okay, so if you do the algebra, then you get P tip. Got a little bit too long an I there. Need to actually move this up. So what you end up with is for this particular problem, uh, a over 2h uh, times w. Okay? Now, if you calculate that, you better find out that this is either less than or equal to mu s n. Of course, in this particular case, our, our n is equal to w. Okay? So what can we really say about this particular problem? Well, I'll summarize that on the next page. Okay, for this particular problem, again, the block on, on the flat surface, uh, P slip we found out to be was uh, mu s. I cannot get into fs, I'm sorry. Uh, mu s, I could rewrite that, but I'm not. Mu s w, you know what we got here. And then P tip we found was equal to A over 2h times w. So therefore, if mu s uh, is less than A over 2h, then the block slips, because that's what we get to first on that uh, plot that we have here. Okay, whatever you get to first happens, okay, because it's going to match it one to one. Whichever is the lower value, that will happen first. So, therefore, okay, so the co converse, if mu s is greater than A over 2h, then the block tips. And you've got to consider uh, both of those, okay. You must check both and you must match it. Uh, to this particular diagram. That's why that's uh, so important uh, to have that in your mind. To me, that's what keeps you uh, guided here is, uh, is this little diagram here. Okay, so you need, when it's asked for motion, you've got to check both uh, slip and tip. Now again, if they don't give the dimensions of the forces or anything, or the size of the box, then, uh, then of course the, uh, they're assuming the slip. But I can guarantee you that will not be the case. If they give you a problem like this, they are in fact trying to check to see whether you know. They almost assuredly will tip in order to catch you. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations and plan of study.